Well, good afternoon. So, uh, my name is Chris Roselli. I'm the director of Young Alumni and Student Programs in Western's Alumni Association. This year, we will have over 3,000 students graduate from Western. We have 43 outstanding graduates. So they are among the top 1%, 1.5% of our graduates to graduate from Western this year. Handpicked by faculty, deans, chairs uh, within those departments. These students, as you already know, are accomplished. They are great people. And you'll hear a little bit more about what went into the process to pick them to make them outstanding graduates. Whether they, be coming from, whether they come from a large department like English or psychology, which for those departments with 200, 300, 400 graduates, it says a lot, it's difficult for those faculty to make that call, or smaller departments where students know faculty very, very closely and those faculty make those decisions very carefully. Western over the last 20 years has increased in competitiveness. U.S. News and World Report for 15 straight years now has rated Western one of the top public undergraduate universities in the United States. What that means is Western's focus on undergraduate education. We don't focus on graduate degrees as much as we do on undergraduate education. Because of that, the focus on the undergraduate, our outstanding undergraduates that are coming in here today, is really what Western does well. And those students who come through here are prepared and they're ready to move on for the next step of the world. We continue to be more competitive. In the last five years, each year, we have admitted our students coming in. We become increasingly more competitive. These students that represent our grads, when they came in as students, represented the most competitive classes we've ever had at Western in 115 years. And now they're graduating, representing the best that Western has ever graduated. So I wanted to let you know a little bit about that process and uh, let you know that as parents, as grandparents, as friends, aunts, uncles, who've come from far and wide to see this, your outstanding graduate truly is outstanding. They're outside getting their photo taken and they'll be in here in a few minutes and uh, we will get the show started. I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure you'll give them the welcome that they deserve. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, 2013 Outstanding Graduates. So everybody's full on cheese and wine and beer, which makes you oh, <laughs> That always gets an applause for some reason, I don't get it. So my name's Chris Roselli, uh, as I mentioned to uh, people earlier. I'm the Director of Young Alumni and Student Programs in Western's Alumni Association. The Alumni Association, soon to be your Alumni Association, puts on this event and we've put it on for the last 38 years, uh, representing Western's best graduates. We've been, we've been honored to host this ceremony. This ceremony recognizes Western's best, the very best. Our best researchers, our best leaders, our best thinkers, our best creators, our best change makers, our best students, our best people. Over the past 38 years, just give you a little bit of a history, in talking with our outstanding graduates, they have moved on to create companies, sell those companies, recreate new companies, and sell those companies again, providing jobs for thousands. They've become leading researchers in the world's top industries, whether it be in medical or education and beyond. They've taught at the world's top schools, whether they be elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, Universities like Oxford, Stanford, Harvard, Princeton, and of course, the best university of all here at Western. <laughs> They've traveled the world and have provided years of selfless work for those less fortunate. And again, this year, Western was the number one medium-sized school in the United States to provide volunteers to the Peace Corps. Yeah, that's worth clapping for. Our outstanding graduates have proven ethical leaders in their business, communities, in their states, and for their country. 
And they've performed at world-renowned concert halls, opera houses, and they've had their work displayed in museums worldwide. Those are the people who have gone across the stage before you. Can't imagine what is going to be up ahead for you, 38 students who are here today, or 36 students here today. For the past 38 years, Western has graduated students who have benefited our world. They've impacted our world and changed our world for the better. The outstanding graduate award ceremony doesn't just recognize our top students, however. Next to these students are outstanding faculty. It's possible, actually, that these students who have achieved so much in their lives through elementary school and high school might actually be sitting to the very first people that they've ever met at school who's actually smarter and more accomplished than they are themselves. That would be the faculty. <laughs> However, these professors aren't sitting here with you today because of their own accomplishments. They're sitting here with you today because they're inspired by you. They are proud of you. And they're proud of the hard work that you have done. Don't forget that, though because it's also because of these faculty members and the opportunities that they have prevented or provided for you, the connections that they have offered you, and for the wisdom that they've shared with you that you are also here today. So the Outstanding Graduate Award. I just gotta make sure I don't drop it. It's a crystal ball. It's a globe. Yeah, it's not one of those crystal balls that, uh, although that would be cool to have too, wouldn't it? Sorry. <laughs> If you want to put this on your desk or at home or whatever and pretend it's a crystal ball, you can do that. Um, but the reason why we picked that is because it is the whole planet. It's a planet that we're certain of the future that you're going to benefit. You'll impact it and change this planet for the better. We hope you display it proudly because you've earned it. So, uh, and by the way, let me clarify one other thing. You may notice the boxes, the words are different sizes up here. I'm just going to show you. We have little box and big box. Inside, uh, well, so actually, um, the more outstanding you are, the bigger the box you get. <laughs> Kidding. So, uh, the, when we decided we wanted to buy more, the manufacturer decided to go with a cool, bigger box. So, just because you got a bigger box, you have the same size crystal globe on the inside. It doesn't mean that you're less special, okay? Okay, so emceeing today's ceremony. Uh, it is an honor to have her as our MC. She's the president of Western's Faculty Senate. She's not only the lead representative of Western's accomplished faculty, but she's also one of Western's most popular, approachable, caring, and challenging professors that we have here at Western. She's also been an outstanding graduate mentor many times over. Please welcome your MC for this evening, professor in Western's Department of Communication, Dr. Karen Stout. kind of a hard act to follow. Uh, it is truly my honor to be here with you this afternoon. Uh, I have sat in the audience as a faculty mentor more than once, and I know from experience just how wonderful and emotional this event can be. We are proud of our students. We are so pleased about your accomplishments. And we're more than a little sad to see you go. Um, I bet there is probably more than one faculty member out there wondering if we could somehow chain you to some radiator so you can't leave. Um, but yet, it is time for the birds to, to fly out of the nest. When we become faculty members, or at least I'll speak for myself for a moment, um, I chose to become a faculty member because I wanted to serve. I wanted to make the world a better place for future generations. And I suspect that many of my colleagues sitting amongst us today feel the exact same way. I know that I, I actually had opportunities to take jobs elsewhere, but I chose to come to Western because of how wonderful the students were. The students are exactly what sold me on this place. And I, I have heard that from other faculty members as well. You might have heard the tagline, active minds changing lives. You are that tagline. You embody that tagline. And we're so, so much a better place because of that. 
So today we're recognizing the quality that you are and just how special you are. Uh, as Chris said, there were 43 departments, 36 are represented here today, and you are the outstanding graduates for your department for the entire year. Just let that sink in for a moment. Some departments chose not to give awards. Some departments chose outstanding graduates or students who are graduates from other quarters. So that means that we have 36 departments here represented today. That means you are, you represent less than the top 1% of the graduating class of Western Washington University. Let that sink in for a minute. You should be feeling pretty proud. And I know family members are probably a little extra, extra proud. I also want you to remember it's not very easy to get here. Everyone has struggle stories in their time making it through college, to get to college, to get through college. Maybe some of you, well I kind of doubt some of you will be surprised you're graduating tomorrow and everything will be fine. But I do know there are probably times at which you wondered, is it possible, can I do it? And there's a quote by Booker T. Washington that I always think of as this day gets a little bit closer. And that quote is, success is to be measured not so much by the position one has reached in life as by the obstacles which she, he has overcome. We're gonna hear probably about some of those struggle stories today, but I hope you remember that whether we hear a struggle story or we just hold it in our heart in the specialness of this day, that it makes this recognition that much more special for you. So, to the business at hand. You might be wondering uh, how we're gonna get through this process today. I'm gonna give you some of those answers now. You might be wondering what are the criteria to get you here, to get students here as outstanding graduates. Each department nominates one student, as Chris alluded to before. It's generally because of the student's exemplary grades, because of the research and or writing skills, because of their service to the campus and the community, and because of their promise for the future. You're also probably wondering, are all outstanding graduates here today? And I've kind of already answered that, and Chris has kind of already answered that. Some can't attend because they've graduated other quarters and gone on to the next phase in their life. Some are actually busy doing other things today, and I'm gonna mention a couple of those people as we get to them. For those who couldn't be here today, their certificates, their certificates are going to be mailed to them. You might also be wondering, how is this going to work? There are 40 or 36 proud faculty accompanying their uh, students and faculty members. I'm gonna give you a couple of instructions now. Please listen, there will be a test later. <laughs> You're only going to speak for two minutes. Now it's gonna be very hard because you're going to wanna to brag about how wonderful and glorious your students are. But there's Mary in the front row. She's gonna hold up a time sheet. See that time? It says 30 seconds and 10 seconds. See that? She's gonna hold that up for you. And then she's gonna hold up a stop sign. And then if you go really over time, she's gonna hold up the sign that says stop in the name of love. We have already coordinated for next year that if speakers go too long, we will start playing music, kind of like the Oscars. <laughs> that starts next year. Uh, faculty members, so two minutes. You're gonna come up to this microphone over here. You can adjust it to uh, speak into it however you need to, but speak actually quite close into it. It is not like this mic where we can have some distance. You actually have to be up quite close. So everybody can hear you. Uh, let's see, and then when you're done, we will, you'll move on and go sit down. Um, you are probably still wondering, how is this going to work? Uh, the first row is very easy. You're just going to come straight forward to the mic, but the second and third rows will be a little bit more complicated. The speaker, the student, and the uh, faculty mentor will step off to the side. We're calling it being on deck. And you're going to be on deck while, uh, as, as, sorry, as one group moves forward, the next group is going to get on deck. And we're just going to kind of keep getting everybody ready to go, except for whatever happened over here. I don't know. 
I, I was still on the stairs when that happened. So um, we are, you're just going to listen for me to call your name, whatever happened over here, and we'll all be fine. But do know that the order that I will be calling names is different than what's listed in your program. So don't be going just by your program. Um, you still might be wondering, how's this going to work? And there is Janine. Where's Janine? There she is. She's going to be the one on deck and kind of guiding people around after the first row gets done. So second and third row folks, you're going to look for her. You might also be wondering, what do I do once I graduate? And for that, I, I don't know. But I'm suspecting. <laughs> I will be holding office hours. You can make an appointment. I'll do my best. Um, but I suspect, based on the fact that you're here today, you're going to be just fine, and you're already on your pathway to success. So let's get started. The first outstanding graduate of today's ceremony is Stephanie Hermanutz from the Department of Accounting, accompanied by Audrey Taylor. Stephanie is a dreamer. At age nine, she dreamt of being an astronaut. In high school, she dreamt of being a college graduate. And she left college after the first quarter to raise her daughter, Caitlin. Now, she didn't drop her dream. She kept dreaming. Worked in the Cheesecake Factory, got a great living, but wanted more. And so 13 years later, she came back. And with the support of her husband, Ryan, and her daughter, Caitlin, she's here and graduating. We in the accounting department knew immediately of her innate talent, her warmth, her generosity. In fact, she came as a dreamer with friends. She has a group called the Posse that took over our honor society and got most of the leadership positions, and then Stephanie came to me and said, would it be all right if I led the tutorial center? And I said, oh, I started crying. Yes. <laughs> what she did for the tutorial center was a miracle. She took seven inconsistent hours of tutoring a week and transformed it into 20. She also um, never bribed the students in order to do the tutoring. <laughs> in fact, she said it was an honor to be a tutor and it was for their best interest. And so they fought to be tutors. And under her tutelage, she had um, tutors that increased tutoring by 300%. But the other thing that I wanted to tell you about Stephanie is she has deep roots. She is a dreamer with a plan. She interned at Larson Gross. She's going to be at our impact next year. And I think she's blossomed because of her family. I'm just going to share because I see the stop sign coming. <laughs> um, I thought of Ecclesiastes when I thought of Stephanie and her family roots. If one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. A cord of three stand, strands is not quickly torn apart. And so you're going to stand a long time. Thank you. Next, we have Christy Gross from Decision Sciences, and she is also accompanied by Audrey Taylor. Christy is an amazing young woman. The uh, Faculty of Manufacturing Supply Chain Management gave me so many quotes uh, based on the last timer. I know I can't share them all with you. But one faculty member said in addition to her academic brilliance, she was curious, motivated, engaged, challenged me with quality questions and intelligent discussion. Another member talked about the fact that she created an internship in winter 2013 at Physio Control. She so impressed Jeff Laub, who was the vice president of manufacturing, that he hired her as an operations intern, and she has laid groundwork for quarters to come and years to come. What I found particularly powerful in one of the faculty statements was that she tutored for three months fifth graders at Mary Purcell Elementary School in Cedro Woolley. 
to fund her time, she was an Applebee's server and a hostess. She interned at PACAR in addition to physio control, and she's also working there full time right now. I um, want to let you know specifically that she has other talents. She's also a violinist, a guitarist, and a singer for Ursa Major. And by the way, their next concert is July 20th at the Honeymoon. <laughs> Christy's the person I sought out her gaze every day in class. I wanted to know what she was getting. She was my touchstone student. And when we talked today, what I was impressed with was how deep her grounding is in her family and especially in her faith. And so I thought I'd share this Proverbs 31 verse. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she smiles at the future. She opens her mouth in wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Many daughters have done nobly, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. I have a plaque from her department that they asked me to give to her, so if you would indulge us. Congratulations, Chris. Kelly Burquist is the outstanding graduate for American Cultural Studies, and Kelly is accompanied by Emily Thuma. It is my great pleasure to present to you Kel Burquist. Kel is a Fairhaven College student, and her interdisciplinary American Cultural Studies major includes a self-defined emphasis in social and historical contexts of health. So in other words, Kel has been studying the politics of health and inequality, how factors of race and gender, socioeconomic status and sexuality have shaped people's access to health care and even their very conceptions of what health might mean. Kel has a stellar record of academic achievements. This spring, she was selected to present her research on the interactions of the U.S. immigration and child welfare systems at Scholars Day. And it was my sincere pleasure to have Kel serve as a peer teaching assistant for my comparative cultural studies class last fall. She did an absolutely fantastic job as a discussion leader and peer supporter. Though Kel's academic achievements are truly impressive in their own right, so are her practices of community and campus engagement. These engagements include her integral involvement with the Student Coalition for Immigration Rights, an associated students club that has helped to further the discourse on this campus about undocumented students' rights and immigrant justice more broadly. Her selection for this award, therefore, is also a commendation of her demonstrated commitments to equity, cultural pluralism, and social justice, which are hallmarks of the ACS program. In all of her endeavors, I I know Kel to be a wonderfully critical thinker and asker of tough questions about her social position in local and global contexts and about her capacity to be an agent of change. Ayana Robinson is the outstanding graduate for anthropology and she is accompanied by Joan Stevenson. I'm going to talk fast, and it's quite an honor to present Ms. Robinson. Ms. Ayanna Robinson and her two younger sisters were raised by her mother, Debbie, who worked tirelessly in order to give Ayanna and her siblings as many opportunities as possible. Her mother was the role model for her thirst to learn, her work ethic, and passion to make a difference in her community. She's the first to go to college from her family. She transferred from Everett Community College to Western. In January 2010, she was a standout from the moment she arrived and promptly got straight A's. She was initially a pre-med prep dual major in dance and kinesiology. Yes, she's also artistic, but switched to the competitive entry biological anthropology BS dual major, partly because of her admiration for the Harvard medical doctor and anthropologist Paul Farmer, who among his many accomplishments helped establish the only standing hospital after the devastation in Haiti and has fought for access to treatments for the poor for tuberculosis and HIV infections. He's sending her a 
one of his, his latest book on Haiti. Dr. Clint Spiegel of the chemistry department, to use his words, elected to admit Ayana into my research group as a paid summer research assistant that same year. His words, my first impression of Ayana was that she is bright, motivated, and a positive individual. Her enthusiasm to learn new things and solve complex problems is remarkable. During her summer research project, she was able to learn many of the nuances of molecular cloning procedures, and I had too much detail in this particular end, but anyway, she's brilliant in the lab. Uh, <laughs> Her, her initiative in the lab has been exemplary. I think it illustrates her dedication to her studies. She presented this work at the 2012 Murdoch Undergraduate Research Conference. She also presented at the 2013 Volcano, what do you mean, conference in bioorganic chemistry, and again during Scholars Week at Western. She's also been a teaching assistant for anatomy and phys and has tutored students at Western and local high school uh, in chemistry. Outside of class in the laboratory, she has been a peer sexual health educator at Western, giving 60 minute presentations on cookies and condoms. Oops, okay. <laughs> There's little that she hasn't done. Anyway, maternal and child reproductive health is one of her passions. Uh, she's been selected for Phi Kappa Phi Strongest Leader Award, the Alumni Association Leadership Award, the Multicultural Achievement Program, many scholarships, and, recent, and most recently, the Presidential Scholar. Dr. Spiegel started his list of her lab accomplishments with she is perhaps the most qualified student for a career in public health he has ever had. She was accepted in master's programs at Tulane and Boston. She was chosen at Boston University's international program, which means she'll be completing her practicum during a 27-month term of service in the Peace Corps, hopefully in Sub-Saharan Africa. After that, she expects to attend medical school. She's a fabulous ambassador for Western, and I'm sure we will continue to hear or read about her accomplishments. Tina Antko is the Outstanding Graduate for Art, and Tina is accompanied by Benjamin Moreau. I'm going to go quick. I like to make a point in my beginning drawing classes and my introduction to printmaking courses that hard work will beat out talent any day, but hard work and talent is unstoppable. Nobody has ever exemplified this more than Tyna Onco. Tyna has worked two jobs in addition to being a full-time student and furthermore has been the printmaking studio monitor slash caretaker, an unpaid position, essentially my eyes and ears when I'm not around. During the last few years, Tyna has earned multiple awards and scholarships from both the art department and the College of Fine Performing Arts. This spring, she was the CFPA representative at the Back to Bellingham Showcase for Scholars Week. And at this very moment, Tanya's artwork can be viewed as part of a two-person exhibition at the Fog Art Gallery in Fairhaven. Um, as she has an incredible drawing and a small group ex exhibition at the Length by Width by Height Gallery in Seattle's Georgetown neighborhood. And last night, opened a solo exhibition of amazing print-based installations at the Ghost Gallery on Capitol Hill in Seattle. For two years, she has served as president of the Dark Side Printmakers, an AS-sponsored club, and has organized fundraisers to support travel for students to attend the annual Southern Graphics Council International Conference. In March of this year, Tyna was named the Southern Graphics Council International's 2013 Undergraduate Fellow and honored Tyna during her, their award ceremony at the US Conference. This is a national award, and the council gives out exactly one award to each undergraduate a year. In addition to being recognized, as the best undergraduate printmaker in the country, Tyna will be spending a month this summer at the Black Church Print Studio in Dublin, Ireland as this year's international printmaker in residence. It should be noted that in order to receive this opportunity, Tyna had to apply for, be chosen over, emerging and established artists from around the globe. Um, this would be an amazing accomplishment for any artist, but to have achieved this before completing your undergraduate education is monumental. Personally, Tyna, you have inadvertently forced me to become a better educator for fear of not being able to match your incredible intellect and creativity, adequately respond to your inquisitiveness, or provide you with proper guidance, direction, or challenges. In a reversal of roles, you have been an inspiration to me in my own studio practice without realizing it. Being able to witness your focus, ambition, and drive as you completed your undergraduate education and laid the groundwork for your career is awe-inspiring and frankly superhuman. I find myself aspiring to be more like you. I am so proud of your accomplishments and the artist you have become, and I will continue to take pride in everything you do going forward. I am so honored to have been work, to work with you, or to be more accurate, that you have chosen to work with me, and at times I find it hard to believe that you, I have had somehow at a part in you becoming the artist that you are today. Um, your talent is that immense. There is something inside of you that cannot be taught, cannot be measured or qualified, and, isn't, and it spills over into the classroom is infectious to those around you. In my relatively short career as an educator, 
You're the best student I have ever had, and you have set an impossible standard for all future students to follow. Your skills in traditional stone lithography have surpassed my own, and I look forward to seeing you with you and talking to you at future openings, art events, and conferences as both a friend and an equal. Thank you for all of your hard work, your stabilizing presence in the print shop, for all the help you gave to fellow students, whether they deserved it or not, for your positive attitude in the face of our perpetually glasses half empty instructor, for taking ownership of the printmaking studio and embracing the community based aspects of the shop better than anyone else, and for rising to and exceeding beyond every challenge. Thank you. See, didn't I tell you this was going to be an emotional event? All right, the outstanding graduate from biology is Matthew Hill, and he's accompanied by Jose Serrano Moreno. So I don't plan to read anything because everything coming from my heart. So Matthew is probably the best or the most eloquent combination of a good human being and a brilliant intellectual power. He combines a couple of things that are outstanding. He is generous, he has an excellent sense of humor, he loves baseball, <laughs> He's, he loves madman, so we talk about these kind of things. But on top of that, He's the person who has the most striving energy to learn and to teach. He combines the rigor of the academic analysis, the intellectual power with generosity. So when you combine that, you can see different performance and different levels. For instance, he as a student teach me. He helps to improve my quality or my teaching quality. His questions, his analysis are outstanding continuously. He, as my, my research uh, assistant, was vital to implement techniques related to microinjection on our site, electrophysiology, and a bunch of stuff that is not necessary to talk about now. <laughs> as a teaching assistant was crucial to implement very demanding labs, including a cell biology lab, which actually is one of the best in the whole nation. So in other words, when you combine everything, he embody the maximal aspiration of any scholar have. He is a brilliant student and a wonderful teacher. He actually eager to learn, to teach, and share. And that's why today, my friend, I salute you. I salute you with honor, with admiration. You are one of the best person I ever met. I, the best for you. Thank you. Ian Falds is the outstanding graduate for Canadian American Studies, and Ian is accompanied by David Rossiter. I didn't bring a piece of paper either. I figured that way I could stretch or compress, depending on how much time I was running out of. Ian, you're the student that every professor wishes that they could have, uh, from freshman right through to senior. Uh, Ian started working with me, I was his advisor in the geography program at, in Huxley College, and he took uh, human geography with me, and then a series of courses right through to the end when he did a senior thesis, uh, as well as uh, an honors thesis. And across that time, two things stand out as sort of directing me towards thinking that you're the ultimate, the exemplar of students. Uh, the first is, Ian came into my office one day when he was sort of starting to get the, uh, the thesis going, and he said, here's what I plan to do. And his plan was to investigate dialect formation and difference across the Canadian-American border and to try to do this sort of historically and geographically. And we started chatting about how he was going to do this. And I thought back to a master's student who I'd had the year before who came into my office after we'd been working up a project, and he sat down and he said, what should I do next? And Ian telling me what he was going to do and then asking for my guidance was exactly what we want to see in a student. The second thing is I, I thought back to Ian uh, in my introductory human geography class and he had to sit there through some lectures that I gave where I wasn't an expert on the topic. Because you know when you do the survey topic course you have to lecture on the geography of language and its dispersal across the world. Well this isn't something as an environmental geographer I've done a lot of work with. 
Well, that is what he grabbed onto for his senior thesis project. And when I taught that same lecture this year, I was able to stand in front of the class and say, I have an investment in this topic. I have a student who is now studying this. And I was able to describe his project. And the students in the class got so much more out of my lecture than they had four years ago. You're probably in that one four years ago, uh, where I really didn't have much connection to the topic. So thanks to Ian, uh, my lecturing, my engagement with some of my subject area has strengthened. Uh, and Ian uh, is. Uh, an exemplar in that regard. So I wish you all the best. You're a self-driven, uh, intelligent, thoughtful person, and I can't wait to see what you do next. Nicole Copen is the outstanding graduate for chemistry, and she's accompanied by Stephen Emery. So it's, uh, it's uh, my honor to present this year's outstanding graduate in chemistry, Nicole Copen. Uh, it's been a, simply a pleasure to serve as Nicole's research advisor for almost four years now. Uh, she came to my office in the spring of her first year, kind of lightly knocked on my door, uh, and asked if she could join my research group. Uh, as we spoke, um, I mean actually more as accurately as I spoke, uh, I could tell right there that Nicole was going to be really good because she really listened and was hungry to learn and practice science. So she joined my undergraduate research group uh, working on a project to develop an instrument to detect circulating tumor cells in the bloodstream. Uh, as part of this project, she has synthesized silver and gold nanoparticles. She built a photon correlation spectroscopy system. And uh, in her spare time, she got to play a lot with lasers. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, she presented her findings at, at regional and national conferences, and after some reformatting, her honors thesis will be submitted for peer review publication. N Nicole has truly excelled both in the classroom and in the research lab. But what really makes Nicole special to me is that she combines her excellence in scholarship with a servant's heart. This is best exemplified by her role as co-president of Western Student Chapter of the American Chemical Society. Uh, she has served as a leader in this group for three years now, uh, first starting out as a real quiet leader, volunteering for science demo shows at local elementary schools, and moving on to today to becoming a vocal leader and serving as a spokesperson for the chapter. Uh, she has surprised herself, I think, in this realm, serving in roles she never thought she'd be capable of filling. And so I'm really excited to see her move on into the next stage of her life. I know she will continue to make the world uh, a better place through both her research, leadership, and service. Uh, this, uh, uh, this summer, she will enter the gra graduate school at the University of Champaign-Urbana. Excuse me, University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana. I'm a little nervous here and emotional, so sorry. Can't read right now. Uh, and are with their plan to study astrochemistry. And so, uh, congratulations, Nicole. This award is well deserved. Rebecca Mantegna is the outstanding graduate for the Department of Communication Studies, and she's accompanied by Michael Carlberg. So I had the pleasure of having Rebecca in the first class that I met her in winter quarter. It was a capstone ethics course. And within about two weeks I realized this young woman has a lot of capacity. I've got a research project I really want to recruit her to, to collaborate with me on. So I approached her only to find out that many of my colleagues who had taught her in previous classes had had the same idea and done the same thing and she was all booked up by the time I got her in my class. You know, when we sat around the faculty table to decide on our outstanding student this, this year, uh, there was a unanimous agreement that Rebecca was that student. All of the faculty agreed that she has an exceptionally bright and focused mind, uh, really impressive analytical thought. She's got an incredible work ethic. She's disciplined. But even more importantly, she's caring. And she works exceptionally well with others. And she has a very altruistic dispensation, or, uh, disposition and really cares about uh, the betterment of humanity and, and the greater common good. 
And it was these qualities really that made her such an easy and simple choice for the faculty. During her time here, she graduated, uh, she's graduating with uh, one of the most outstanding GPAs we've seen this year. She was awarded uh, outstanding uh, poster presentation by a university-wide committee on our campus for Scholars Week. But most significantly for me, observing her in my sem capstone seminar, she contributed outstanding insight to the learning of other students. She really enriched the experience of her fellow students. And we're very grateful for uh, spending this time with you, Rebecca, and we wish you the best. Braley Murray Craft is the outstanding graduate from Communication Sciences and Disorders, and she's accompanied today by Rico Darling. Just the mic for a short person. <laughs> today, I have the pleasure of introducing to you all Ms. Braley Murray Craft, the Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders outstanding graduate. Like all of those of you who have been chosen and are in attendance today, Braley truly is deserving of this recognition. She has excelled academically and has always been one of our best students. Braley stands out from her peers, however, because of her critical thinking skills, hardworking and inquisitive nature, and because of her obvious enthusiasm for learning. Braley is not just motivated by her desire for good grace, but also because she truly wants to understand materials presented and to apply that acquired knowledge in a positive, contributing, and meaningful manner. In addition to her intellectual strengths, Braley is also a considerate, kind, and collaborative individual who is held in high regard by her peers, department staff, as well as all CSD faculty members. Braley has contributed much to the CSD department and to the local community in her short time here as a student. For instance, her leadership skills and attention to detail enabled the local chapter of the National Student Speech Language and Hearing Association to have a well-attended, very memorable, and highly successful auction-based fundraising event this year. The monies raised in excess of $15,000 for such a small group will benefit those patients who are not able to financially afford speech, language, and hearing evaluation or treatment services that are offered at our clinics. To quote Braley, quote, a liberal arts education is not just about knowing everything there is to know about a specific field. It's about learning how to learn. It fosters development of skills needed to participate in communities with an open-minded appreciation of different disciplines and points of view. I feel truly privileged to have played a role in her education about audiology in particular, about communication sciences and disorders in general. However, I am more grateful for the opportunity that I've had to interact with Braley a student who strives for the broader but more valuable experiences of learning how to learn, learning how to appreciate those different points of views that are out there. We, her teachers, advisor, peers, friends, parents, and sibling, are very proud of this young woman who is honored here today. I know she will certainly excel in anything she aspires to in the future. I am presenting Braley on behalf of Dr. Barbara Mather Smith, who is on the program. Unfortunately, she's not able to do that. And so I'm pinch hitting, but these were my words, and I truly mean everything I say. Harveen Sandhu is the outstanding graduate for Community Health, and she's accompanied today by Ying Li. The Community Health faculty are honored to celebrate Harveen as our outstanding major. This young woman is driven, observant, diligent, 
high quality leader and the work she produced has consistently stood out as exceptional in all of her major related classes. Harveen also exhibits remarkable traits of a health educator in her service to the community. She has volunteered her time at the Sinmar Community Health Clinic, facilitating health education classes in tobacco cessation, nutrition, diabetes, and STD prevention. Worked in the migrant outreach program, served as a village health trainer in Uganda, and she currently works as a nursing assistant to HIV positive individuals at the Sin Hanfier House. Through even brief interaction with this outstanding graduate, you would be able to identify her as a compassionate young woman with a heart of a service. While outstanding major awards tend to be academic in nature, Harveen is so much more than a scholastic record of excellence. Outside of her scholar and volunteer lives, she challenges herself. She's not afraid to engage in conversation with others from diverse backgrounds. She keeps up with current events, regularly works to improve her vocabulary, and is known as a loyal friend. Additionally, with her sense of calm and pause, she's able to enjoy the little things in life, even during hectic times. Over the years, the community health faculty have enjoyed having the opportunity to learn about the various complexities of our, our outstanding major. The fact that she likes country music, would choose to drive a jeep if she could, uh, enjoy watching Dexter and have the Harry Potter series listed as her favorite books, all add to endearing nature of this fantastic young woman. As her faculty, we would like to thank you, Harvey's family, for supporting her and for allowing us the opportunity to have their daughter, niece, and cousin join us at Western. Congratulations, Harvey. We are so proud of you. Brian Schiller is the outstanding graduate from computer science and he is accompanied by Perry Fasano. See, I told you you got a big box. See? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm here today to uh, recognize the unanimous choice for outstanding gr graduate in computer science, Brian Schiller. Um, a typical computer science graduating class uh, might have one person with a 4.0 GPA. It might have a couple people that double majored in math and computer science, and it might have one or two people that were outstanding citizens of the department. Uh, but this year, we have one person who embodies all of those things, uh, and that's Brian. Um, as I said, Brian earned an A in every class he took at Western, which is quite an accomplishment, um, while completing a couple rigorous majors. But um, in addition to those academic accomplishments, Brian found it within himself to step up and take a leadership role in the department as well. Uh, he found time to be a knowledgeable and patient tutor. He mustered energy to take part in and succeed in a number of academic competitions such as the ACM programming contest, the mathematical modeling contest, the Putnam exam, the Cryptos cryptography challenge. Um, and this week, um, I actually just went around the department and I told people, um, every, every, all the students were in support of Brian being our outstanding graduate as well. Um, and I asked people, I said, so what's, what do you think about Brian? And everybody was incredibly um, respectful of his intelligence, but everybody quickly turned the conversation towards his humbleness and his willingness to help out his fellow students. Uh, and I think um, we value that too as a faculty. So um, personally, I look forward to seeing what Brian's future holds, uh, and I have a pretty good feeling that this outstanding graduate award will be a molehill compared to the mountain of accomplishments that you'll achieve. And uh, we'll miss you, and congratulations. Brittany Splinter is the outstanding graduate for dance, and she is accompanied by Susan Haynes.
I am thrilled to get to tell you about Brittany Splinter, the outstanding graduate for dance. Brittany came here as a freshman and immediately placed in our upper level ballet classes, which is quite unusual. She was not planning on majoring in dance. The dance faculty watched Brittany give in to her passion over time. As a freshman, she was just taking classes for fun. Then she declared the minor, and then the major, and then went on to apply for the BFA degree and continued by receiving some of our top scholarships and our educational outreach teaching in elementary schools. Brittany's talents have been recognized not only by the faculty at Western, but by each guest artist that has come during her time at Western. The Martha Graham Dance Company selected Brittany as a featured soloist in Steps in the Street, and most recently, the Liz Gehring Dance Company also chose her for a featured role in their piece, She Dreams in Code. This company is in New York, and Brittany will be joining them with an internship in the fall, which is quite exciting. I think these professional residencies have helped her to see that she has what it takes to make it in the dance world. Her own discipline and skill and talents, but even more importantly, her love of dance and dancing. I have no doubt that Brittany will succeed in the professional world. What will sustain her and drive her forward is her own deep-seated desire for dance, her love of the art form, and her determination. In class and on stage, she loves to challenge herself, and she has applied this to all areas of her life. Not only did she complete the dance major as our outstanding graduate, but she's a double major in English. I can't wait to see what she will accomplish next as she dances on even larger stages than we have here at Western. Brittany, we're so proud of you. Congratulations, and we will miss you. Our next outstanding graduate couldn't be here today, but we still wanted to give some recognition for Lacey Nagel. Uh, she is from the design department and would have been accompanied by Kent Smith, but Lacey is currently presenting at the design department show and wanted to um, be a part of that community today. So instead, next we have Rachel Ashby, the outstanding graduate from East Asian, East Asian Studies, and she's accompanied by Diana Wright. I am not a public speaker. Yes, I teach, but I'm not a public speaker. Rachel, on the other hand, has got it down. She's been able to shepherd, nurture, and, God forbid, uh, deal with more uh, uh, students who are running amok uh, from the uh, uh, exchange program than many. Uh, she never gave me a paper on Bushido, I don't think. And for that alone, I would raise her standard high. Um, she does have uh, plans to attend intensive language study uh, this summer in Japan, to come back and become a, a TESOL candidate. And then she wants to go and teach English in Japan. I have tried to discourage this, getting her to go to a uh, graduate program, but uh, she has her own mind. And I applaud her for her accomplishments. Certainly she is one of the highest uh, winning students that we've had in East Asian studies. So, Ijo Des. So I think it's at this point we're starting to move into the second row, and so some of the names may not quite line up exactly as I'm expecting. Uh, our next outstanding graduate is Remy Levin, and Remy was selected as the outstanding graduate for two departments, so is coming forward with two faculty mentors from economics, Yvonne Durham, and from mathematics, Bronco Kyrgyz.
I'm very honored to be here today and making some comments about Remy. I'm totally going to have to throw out what I was going to say because I don't have time. Um, so I'm, I actually offered to share my time with um, one of uh, Remy's other mentors uh, who could not be here today. So uh, I'm going to read some remarks uh, by Dr. Dan uh, Hagen. Uh, it has been an honor and a privilege to get to know Remy over the past few years. All of the usual accolades apply. He's extremely bright, hardworking, conscientious, and highly creative. But in thinking about his greatest gift, it occurs to me that it is his, will it is his willingness to annoy. In any academic endeavor, this is a very valuable trait and is all too rare. I am reminded of the classic Doonesbury cartoon where a professor is holding forth at the podium trying without much success to stimulate a response from his students by making increasingly absurd statements. The Constitution is a dangerous document. All power should rest with the executive. Jefferson was the Antichrist. <laughs> Democracy is fascism night as day. The students simply continue to write it all down without protest. One student finally says to another, boy, this course is really interesting. <laughs> to which the other student responds, you've said it, I didn't know half this stuff. <laughs> I can tell you that is not what would have happened had Remy been in the classroom. After the first statement, he would have put down his pencil, given the professor a disapproving look, and after the second, he would say, this is an exact quote. Now, wait a minute. He would then proceed to challenge everything the professor is saying, demanding evidence, offering counter-arguments, while blissfully, blissfully ignoring any notion that the professor should be given special deference beyond that merited by the logic of the professor's argument and the strength of his evidence. Remy once asked me if I was annoyed by the fact that he is so assertive in challenging me. Quite the contrary. While his behavior may seem annoying, and it is in fact a great gift. I would like to thank him for so willingly providing this gift relentlessly and during our every encounter. As Remy leaves Western and goes on to accomplish great things, I am both ha very happy for Remy and at the same time a bit sad, as his willingness to annoy will be greatly missed here at Western. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing the stop sign. Um, I want to add something to this. Um, I think one of his greatest gifts, in addition to being, uh, being annoying, is that he's also greedy. Uh, he is greedy in seeking out knowledge. He's insatiably curious, and I, I want to say thank you to him for that. Uh, he has made us better in the department. He's challenged us. He's made us better teachers, better learners, um, and, and essentially he's leaving us better than he found us, and we know that he will continue to do that as he goes on um, into future endeavors. So congratulations, Remy. Um, we will really miss you. Now you are wondering why was Remy chosen to be outstanding graduate also at the math department. So now I, I will try to justify the department's decision. So it is maybe interesting to point out that Remy uh, came to the math department relatively late in his uh, academic career, only at his third year at Western, and he started relatively slowly, taking only one math 100 level class for three consecutive quarters. But then I would somehow praise us for winning him over. And during the next <laughs> six quarters that followed, he took 17 math classes, of which four were at graduate level. That is first significant accomplishment. Then he passed comprehensive exam which is a challenging exam which comprises of material from seven math classes from calculus to differential equations. That's a second accomplishment. Then he did senior project uh, in which he investigated rigorous mathematical theory behind this popular concept of fractals. And he presented his project at uh, uh, Northwest Conference at uh, Pacific Lutheran University in Tacoma and here at Western at the colloquium talk and also during Scholars Week. Um, then th this earned him uh, graduation with distinction in mathematics which in last 13 years only 11 students accomplished that 
and I have to recognize Brian Schiller also graduated with distinction in mathematics, so just to be fair. <laughs> and this is maybe in math more uh, of an accomplishment than outstanding graduate. And so, but more on a personal note, I had, uh, I had Remy in three of my classes and it was really amazing that uh, I felt that his presence in class contributed in a very positive way to the class atmosphere. He asked inspiring questions, his comments were really intriguing, generated discussion in class and so. Uh, now, I hope that Remy is ready for his next challenge that is going to graduate school and he's, he will try some of the best schools in economics and statistics and we wish him all the best success in that. If he could be here today, the next outstanding graduate would be Ramundo Rodriguez from elementary education and accompanied by, by Maria Timon Flores, but Ramundo couldn't be here today. So next we have Craig Frederick from engineering technology and his outstanding, and his faculty mentor, Nikki Larson. Typically I don't need a microphone as I am typically a nice, loud professor to begin with. So it is my pleasure to introduce you all to Craig Frederick, who is the outstanding senior from engineering technology. Additionally, Craig is a double major in math, which seems to be a ongoing theme. He was also chosen as a nominee for the math department's outstanding graduate for this year as well. Math, math. Craig has consistently exhibited outstanding performance in his coursework with an extremely high GPA. He has maintained part-time employment both off campus and on throughout his undergraduate work. As an indication of his intelligence and communication skills, Craig has been selected as a teaching assistant nine times in both engineering technology and math. The fact that faculty members select Craig so often as a TA shows the level of trust that we have in him. Craig has also served the engineering technology program repeatedly as a volunteer during outreach events such as the Fall Family Open House and Compass to Campus. He has also been volunteering as a coach for Seahome High School's wrestling team and as a baseball umpire for the Boys and Girls Club for the last three years. Furthermore, Craig has been a member of an interdisciplinary research team for the past year, working with engineering technology and chemistry students and faculty members alongside with an industry partner in aerospace in composite materials. Craig's work focuses on the understanding the effect of environmental conditions on these hydrophilic materials. Since the industry partner manufactures airplane components throughout the US, Canada, and Mexico, it's also critical that we have thorough understanding of how temperature and humidity affect the processing and performance of these composite materials. The research that Craig and his team have completed so far aided in the acquisition of a research grant from Washington State's Joint Center for Aerospace and Technology Innovation Program. The results from Craig's work will be submitted for publication in the Journal of Composite Materials next year. Overall, we are thrilled to have had the opportunity to know and work with Craig. He is an exceptional person and I look to all that he has to offer the world in the future. Thank you. Attaway is the outstanding graduate for the Department of English, and Anna is accompanied by Catherine Vulich. Small boxes look quite nice, too. <laughs> I've had Anna in two very different upper division classes, a literature class and a translation class, and I have mentored her, through her throughout her senior year. I've been deeply impressed with her analytical ability, intellectual generosity to other students, her research and writing skills, her creativity, and her intellectual ambition. She is truly an exemplary student. Despite her consistently heavy workload off campus, she's taken on some very challenging courses, and she's been adventurous in the kinds of challenges she undertakes. For example, in both the classes she took with me, she asked permission to double the length of her final assignments beyond the requirements so that she could tackle more substantial projects. 
For one of those final projects, she added a beautifully developed research and critical theory component, even though this was not requested by the assignment. In talking with Anna's other faculty, I've confirmed that across her classes, Anna consistently takes on more than her professors ask of her. My colleague Chris Patton commented that in his literature and creative, creative writing classes, quote, Anna was doing more work, uh, sorry, Anna was doing work more intellectually agile, interpretively rich, and theoretically informed than that of most students in my own doctoral program. Anna also demonstrates an impressive ability to apply ideas and content from one class or discipline to another, leading her to conceive of creative research questions for projects that she carries out in very imaginative and insightful ways. I've always been able to count on Anna to raise the bar in her writing, in her writing and class discussion and for helping me to make any class experience more productive for herself and her classmates. This spring, we learned that Anna was accepted into her top two programs with funding. She will be attending Harvard's Divinity School uh, Master's in Theological Studies program. Harvard is lucky to have her. I'm proud that she will be an excellent ambassador for Western now that she is graduating, and I know Anna will continue to do impressive work in her graduate studies and beyond. Congratulations. Jamie Halpin is the Outstanding Graduate for Environmental Sciences, and Jamie is accompanied by Brooke Love. So, Jamie always sits in the front of the class. I'm, I'm sure she's not alone among this group of students in having that feature. Um, <laughs> but. She does so, I think, because she is really genuinely interested and excited about what's going on in the classroom. Um, and, and as the person who's standing up there looking out at those sea of faces, it's, it's always gratifying to have, to have a few of those, of those faces who are, who are looking back at you and really, uh, really engaged and really excited about what's happening in the classroom. Um, so she just doesn't want to miss any of it. And, and it appears that she does not miss much. She makes a habit of breaking the curve, um, which I'm sure is also not a unique feature um, among the group who is gathered here today. Um, but she also makes a habit um, of taking her energy and enthusiasm for what goes on in the classroom out um, into the community and into the world. Um, we work hard to understand the science, you know, how things work and how changing one thing will affect the rest uh, of what's going on. But this understanding has to be implemented and communicated to others. Uh, Jamie has done all these things. She knows the science, and she's made connections with peers in the dorms as an eco-rep, um, educated the public at Larrabee State Park. She also works hands-on to restore a streamside riparian habitat. All this demonstrates her willingness to really go the extra mile. Um, and put her knowledge into action and her real dedication to science. She will go far and we hope continue to demonstrate how environmental science can be applied to benefit society and the ecosystems that we all depend on. We're very proud um, to name Jamie Halpin as our outstanding graduate. Eric Messerschmidt is the Outstanding Graduate for Environmental Studies and is accompanied by Wendy Walker. I feel very lucky today to be presenting Eric to you. I've been lucky enough to have him as a teaching assistant for a field program that we do every spring. We have a 17 credit block where we take people out in the mountains and to isolated islands and we also run programs for elementary schools and high schools and it's quite the three ring circus. Eric did this program last year as a student and was exemplary and when he agreed to come back as a teaching assistant for the program this year, you could almost hear the huge sigh of relief and exultation from the rest of the staff. Because Eric's not just an assistant, he can run things on his own. He's one of these people that you can hand a body of work to and he'll handle it and you know it will be done well and maybe even will have some angles that you didn't think of. This year we had a third high school ask to be part of our field program on Susha Island and I thought how can we add a third high school? We don't have a third faculty member and I turned and saw Eric. 
And I thought, we do have a third faculty member in some ways. He had worked with the program the year before. He took it over and ran, it ran like clockwork. And an extra 25 high school students had the chance to experience environmental studies on Susha Island because of Eric's expertise. He's just a remarkable young man. He double majored in environmental science and environmental education. And he brings the best of, of interdisciplinary studies to everything he does. He's an accurate scientist, but he has strong empathy. He's a, an astonishing person in that he can think scientifically and also metaphorically. He has a lot of empathy, but he doesn't enable people. He empowers people. He's a really remarkable leader. I think he's going to go very far wherever he chooses. And the next thing he's doing is climbing Mount Baker tonight between this event and tomorrow's graduation ceremony. <laughs> and I think that tells you a lot about him. Congratulations, Eric. Cassandra Helms is the outstanding graduate for finance and marketing and is accompanied by Sandra Mottner. Good afternoon. It is my absolute pleasure to present Casey Cassandra Helms to you. She was an absolutely easy choice for our department, which is finance and marketing, a little unusual. Um, but she is truly outstanding. And of course she has a great academic record. That goes without saying. It is stunning. But she's also not only been an outstanding student throughout her college career here at Western, but she has particularly excelled in marketing, and we're real pleased about that. While excelling academically, Casey has worked every single quarter that she's been here at Western on full time, um, and then completed marketing internships every single summer. One of those happened to be Boeing's, and she's going to work there on Monday, I think. <laughs> oh my God. Um, she doesn't take breaks. Um, Casey ha has been assigned to the very busy and challenging development office in the College of Business and Economics for three years until <laughs> we were fortunate after to get her as our student helper for this past year and she's been fabulous. We've protected her quite wildly um, from other people who might have poached her. <laughs> um, <laughs> She's helped to plan and manage a number of advisory board members uh, uh, meetings. Uh, she has also taken on a number of other extra duties. And as I've worked through these meetings and events, I know that Casey was right by my side. She had my back the whole time, and it was wonderful. She exhibited exemplary professional skills and maturity far beyond her years. And uh, she's done a wonderful job with all of that. She's also made a huge contribution to the Student Marketing Association as their Vice President of Operations. And she's put on a wide variety of programs with associated students and other clubs. We are so proud of her. She's also coordinated our Western's excellence in marketing, uh, in our marketing challenge that we hold annually. And she's a member of the Beta Sigma Business Honorary. And we could not be more proud of a graduating senior. Yay, Casey. Sydney Gunnarsson is the outstanding graduate for geology, and Sydney is accompanied by Doug Clark. Mm. I'll just pick this thing up. Um, Sydney was a, a very easy choice uh, for our outstanding graduate in geology. Um, she truly exemplifies what it takes to be a truly excellent geologist. Um, not only because she's outstanding academically um, with an almost straight A GPA as well as a minors in both French and math 
And not only is she great in the lab with analytic tools of, of all variety, but she also has that one trait that is really required in our department for sure, but in most geologists, and that is a love of getting outside and getting grubby. And uh, she exemplified that during a series of three different research projects that I had the honor to work with her on in the last year culminating with her senior thesis um, that was trying to constrain the last time that glaciers came romping through Bellingham. And uh, she's done an excellent job with that. And through all the trials and tribulations that go with any sort of field-based project, where you go outside and it's raining, it's dumping rain, it's yet again in Bellingham. And it's, you're getting muddy again, you're plowing through bushes and shrubs trying to find that one outcrop. Um, she always persevered and never gave up, was consistently willing to go back out in the field and get the information that we really needed to get this done and we finally got some really great data so I'm very excited about that but Sydney puts all these together in one amazing package that has just been a really wonderful person to work with um, the, she was a unanimous choice of the department for outstanding graduate this year so congratulations Sydney Laura Tompkins is the outstanding graduate for history and is accompanied by Polly Myers. I'm very honored to present uh, Laura Tompkins on behalf of the history department. She graduated in December uh, of 2012 with a 3.8 uh, GPA. I've had the honor of having Laura in three history classes and she consistently uh, just shined uh, in every history class that she had with me. Uh, she displayed a passion for education and was simply a joy to have in class. She made classroom discussions better by consistently raising the bar and making other students think critically. Most impressive to me, she was motivated not by grades, but by a desire to really learn the material and think critically about it. And I recall one day handing a paper back to her in my office hours and uh, informed her rather smugly that she got the highest grade in the class. I was expecting some sort of reaction. Uh, I was expecting her to look at the grade, uh, be grateful. Uh, she didn't. She didn't even look at the grade. She shoved the paper aside and began a 20 to 30 minute conversation about her research findings. And to me that exemplifies what I look for in students, what I value in students. Uh, she wanted to talk about the deeper meanings behind her research. So to me, this is what makes Laura an outstanding graduate. Her dedication to learning and to excellent. She consistently displays rigor uh, and nuanced writing and discussion skills as a history student. She also thought about her work in a larger context beyond the university. She presented a paper at the 2012 uh, History Honor Society meeting in Spokane on the dynamics of post-breakup Yugoslavia in the 1990s. She also wrote a compelling senior thesis which examined Germany's foreign policy during the Gulf War of the 1990s. Uh, professors Andrew Denning and Roger Thompson of the History Department observed Laura's work at Western indicates her dexterous command of the skills used by professional historians on a day-to-day -day basis. We are proud to recognize her accomplish. This is very well deserved. Thank you, Laura. Heather Reese is the Outstanding Graduate for Human Services and is accompanied by Diana Jones. Well, I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to talk about Heather today. Heather's a human services major and she also received a minor in Spanish. Uh, while in the major, Heather worked and interned with the Opportunity Council and served as a community organizing intern for the Wacom Family and Community Network. She also volunteered with the Youth Suicide Prevention Network and participated in the 2011 National Sailing Championship. So she's a well, very well-rounded individual. Over the last year in the a year and a half as part of her honors thesis, Heather developed, administered, and analyzed and disseminated the results of her off-campus student life survey. The survey was designed to gain a broader understanding of student experiences with housing and neighborhood life. Included were questions about rental conditions, concerns about safety, safety uh, knowledge about parties, and access to community resources. The survey went out to more than 3,500 Western students and received a 30% response rate, not too shabby. The total responses represented 10% of the entire off-campus uh, off student body. 
Results revealed a number of significant safety and health concerns that Western students deal with and on, on a routine basis. There were uh, some really interesting findings in her survey. For example, she found that more than two-thirds of renters reported housing without carbon monoxide detectors. About a third of students reported problems with mold. 28% uh, reported holes, leaks, cracks, or decay in their ceilings, floors, or walls. One in five reported problems with rodents and pests. 18% reported electrical, uh, unsafe electrical outlets. When students actually went to their landlord to get some of these things fixed, 40% of the landlords did not respond in uh, illegally time, legal, timely fashion. So in addition to reporting on these important housing concerns, Heather's work has been also noteworthy generally in detailing how students participate in the life of their neighborhoods, how well they know their neighbors, their community associations, and their town. In short, she addressed critical elements of university and town life. Heather has presented these important results at Western Scholars Week, to the C Campus Community Coalition, to the Seahome Neighborhood Association, for which she also served on the board, and to the Roosevelt Neighbor Neighborhood Association. Because of her study, she was invited to work with the mayor and the Bellingham City Planning Committee in advocating for licensing of rental housing here in Bellingham, and she continues to work on this issue. In the future, uh, her next steps will include AmeriCorps, and she just want, plans on continuing working with community organizing and community development. Thank you so much, Heather, for the opportunity to work with you. I couldn't be prouder of the work she's done and continues to do. Congratulations. <laughs> Olivia Henry is the outstanding graduate for journalism and she's accompanied by Sheila Webb. I'm so pleased to be here today. I teach in the visual journalism sequence and I only had live in one class. She's actually a news editorial sequence major, um, but I know a lot about her because uh, she and I have done research together at her instigation and I'm, I'm the beneficiary. Um, I did meet Liv first in my ethics class and in this class students um, apply ethical theories doing an audit of a news source. We call it an audit. She examined the rhetorical framing of female candidates in the New York Times. Hers was so extensive and so robust she had more than 70 categories and for the first and only time uh, in all the uh, times I've taught this course I had to advise a student to reduce their research domain. Um, her paper was so sophisticated and nuanced and showed how and really showed how female candidates were really portrayed in this great newspaper in a very gendered way. Liz later, Liv later asked me if she could assist me in something I was working on. She was looking to do research in the department and I jumped at that offer and so she recently did an ideation paper on uses and gratification theory as a way to help her prepare a lit review. I'm hoping she goes to grad school. What impressed me was not only that I could trust Liv to survey this theoretical field as it related to my topic, but the questions she had, her thoughtful approach, and her evident desire to explore theory made this whole interaction much more um, meaningful. Um, this quarter, she is working as an intern at Investigate West. It's a nonprofit investigative journalism studio in Seattle. And as one of her references, Robert McClure, the editor, called me for a reference. And he said, is there anything we need to know about her? And I said, the one thing you need to know is that she will do too much work. So you really kind of need to rein her in, um, because otherwise she'll go nuts. Um, and I do want to let you know, I'm so pleased about this. She just told me this today, a story she co-authored on the state's water quality standards has contributed to a significant action by our governor just last week. Um, I'd like to share two accolades about Liv from our department. Carolyn Nielsen wrote, Liv has an extraordinary ability to ask thought-provoking questions, both of her peers and of her professors. She facilitates respectful critical discourse in class and brings depth to the discussion. And Jack Keith, who's, who is the um, advisor for our Western Front, wrote, this. Liv was such a terrific reporter, I named her the outstanding contributor. So on behalf of our department, I'm honored to be here with her. I know she will make us proud. This fall, she's working as her strategic communications program assistant, which is a, a Quaker lobby in D.C. After that, I do hope she goes to grad school, and she can count on any number of us to write rave recommendations for her.
Before I get to the next outstanding graduate who's actually here this afternoon, I did want to mention Cora Braun, uh, who could not be here today. She is the outstanding graduate for kinesiology and physical education, and she would have been accompanied by David Suprock, but they couldn't be here today. So, so, so yes, absolutely, we can give a round of applause. And next, I want to introduce Catherine Eilers, the outstanding graduate from Liberal Studies, accompanied by Scott Pierce. Well, it's a great pleasure to um, present Catherine as the outstanding graduate of the Liberal Studies this year. She graduated in winter and she has really honored us by coming back up here for this spring event. I'll also throw in that her mentor uh, was Andrea Gogrof, who was unable to attend today because she has a child of her own in another part of the country who is graduating. So it's my great pleasure and honor to step in. Um, it was a unanimous decision in behalf of Catherine because of a, the quality of her work and her consistent work ethic. Um, presenting things put forth by my fellow faculty, she was always on time to class, coming well prepared, with excellent participation, and very good work on the essay exams that we inevitably do. To return to the quality of her work, her research was meticulous. It was original in approach and exciting in ideas. Uh, this exciting work culminated in her senior thesis, which was called Social Criticism and Self-Validation, Maria Edgeworth's Model of Femininity in the Novels Belinda and Patronage. At the Liberal Studies Department's uh, Scholars Week presentation, she gave a very well thought out, well presented argument that this 19th century English writer Maria Edgeworth was a pioneer in education of women and equality in marriage. Catherine is going to go on to do graduate work in library science, and we are very proud to count her as among the outstanding students at Western Washington University. Next is Sean Gines, the outstanding graduate from linguistics, accompanied by Judy Pine. Oh, yeah, it's not. I have been editing this down, and I can reach the back of the room. Um, so I'm going to try not to go too long. Too long. It's with great pleasure that I introduce Sean Gines, the outstanding graduate for the Interdisciplinary Linguistics Program. Sean has had a parapetic undergraduate career here at Western. He started out in fine arts, amazingly enough, but we sucked him over into the College of Humanities and Social Sciences relatively quickly. Uh, where he started out in classics, uh, he collaborated in classics with Professor Diane Johnson in the development of a student faculty design major in classical studies and began the study of Latin, Greek, and Hebrew, which was the beginning of his interest, I think, in languages. Um, in his freshman and sophomore years, he was in classical, he, he was in this classical studies program and he, along with Professor Johnson and some fellow Western students, founded an undergraduate publication, Vexillum, which is a student-run journal of medieval and classical studies of which he served as editor-in-chief, and that journal is now a national journal. In the course of his undergraduate career, Sean has presented 14 conference papers, published five peer-reviewed articles, and written four book reviews. He's the winner of the Taylor Anastasio Award for Student Research in Anthropology, his other major, and also the winner of the Best Undergraduate Presentation Award at the 19th Annual University of Texas, Texas at Arlington Student Conference in linguistics, and he saw a student conference which is primarily presented at by graduate students and not undergraduate students. And I believe that they actually had to come up, they, they designed, they invented the award. Oh, <laughs> just for him. Uh, <laughs> because there wasn't an undergraduate award, so he's the first undergraduate award winner. Um, he went from classical studies into linguistics, uh, where he worked with Professor Edrida, and ended up in uh, Kosovo as a study abroad, which 
gotten into him and stop now already, good grief. Okay, we started in the anthropology, I met him in my ethnography communications class, where he began doing work on masculinities and also nerd culture, and he's going off to graduate school in Boston at the University of Massachusetts there. And I want to close with an Isaac Asimov quote, quote because Sean was concerned that by going with this nerd culture work instead of, for example, endangered language work, that he might not be doing as much good in the world as he could do with his intellect. Um, as well said, there's a cult of ignorance in the United States, and there has always been. The strain of anti-intellectualism has been a constant thread winding its way through our political and cultural life, nurtured by the false notion that democracy means that my ignorance is just as good as your knowledge. The study of nerd culture in the 21st century, which Sean is setting out at, is, I think, a study of the practice of a practice associated with that anti-intellectualism. I am firm in my belief that insights Sean may provide could be instrumental in addressing the problem that Asimov describes, because you cannot solve a problem that you don't thoroughly understand. And I look forward to reading what Sean produces and hearing him present at conferences in the years to come. Jeffrey Hales is the outstanding graduate for management and is accompanied by his faculty mentor, Tom Rail. Jeff really fits the model of a liberal arts education that is really part of Western. Uh, he combines the global knowledge and understanding of an international business degree with the analytical discipline of an economics ma minor and strong Japanese language and cultural experience, all with really good grades, of course. Uh, Jeff knew that he couldn't, that he really could benefit by an intensive international experience, so he got himself a Boren Fellowship, full ride, one of only two in the country, in order to study for a year at Akita International. National University in the north of Japan. Uh, he knew that he had, needed to know the uh, context in which he was living, so he picked a rice farming family as his host family. Transplanting rice in the spring of the cold traditions, festivals, uh, uh, doing the harvesting of the corners of the rice paddy where the rice uh, uh, where the rice harvester couldn't go. Rather than travel, he did his winter vacation project to try to find ways to get more people to come to that area uh, as foreign tourists. Uh, in the devastation that followed the tsunami, he uh, joined a group that sifted through the debris to find some valuable momentum, mementos that they could give back to all the people who had suffered so much in that area. Jeff has the courage, the curiosity, and the creativity uh, to craft this kind of international and educational experience. Uh, we all wish that more of our students would take those kinds of challenge, and we really like him for that. Back in Bellingham, he wasn't satisfied. He realized that he could help increase international understanding of those who couldn't study abroad. So as assistant resident director of Buchanan Towers, he initiated and ran an international programming board that brought international speakers and experiences to the residents of that dorm. Uh, Jeff will return to Japan for another year and maybe more of Japanese cultural uh, work in the Japanese cultural environment while planning for graduate school in international studies. We're really looking forward, Jeff, to the new combinations that you give us where you'll, just as you've done now, creatively utilize all these ideas as your career develops. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure. Jacob Price is the outstanding graduate from Modern and Classical Languages and is accompanied by Paki Paredes. Oops. Okay, I guess I'll just hold on to it. Uh, it is my great pleasure to present to you Jacob Price, or Jacobo, as he's known in the hallways of Miller Hall. Uh, he is, oops. 
he is uh, graduating with a major in Spanish and minors in history and Latin American studies. Um, I met Jacobo about two years ago. Our first um, contact was through email. He had been living in the Dominican Republic for two years and he was interested in coming back to Bellingham and majoring in, in Spanish. The first thing that struck me about him was the, the proficiency that he showed in his written Spanish since we were talking through email. Indeed, if, if um, you had a chance to hear him or see what he writes, his, uh, his Spanish, the way he writes and speaks Spanish is that of a very articulate, uh, very well-read, uh, highly educated native speaker, um, which is not an easy thing uh, to do. Um, having received a student like that soon, every faculty member in the department was talking about, um, about Jacob, about his abilities, his conscientiousness, his work ethic, his passion, his dedication for everything related to the Spanish-speaking world. Um, he uh, is one of those students whose paper you are always looking forward to reading because you're pretty sure that he's probably going to add something to your own understanding of a social event, a cultural phenomenon, or, or a literary work. Um, he's also one of those students that comes to your office right before um, summer and asks you to um, give him a, a list of readings. And not only does he complete those readings at the end of the summer, but comes back to your office with suggestions for you to read because he's read something else that he thinks will be interesting to you. I have very little time remaining, so I just want to say that all of the faculty members in Spanish agree that he's not only a stellar student, but also a stellar teacher. Um, he has worked with faculty members in the department, aiding with um, intermediate level courses, and he's always, he was also a facilitator in the Spanish conversation classes for faculty and staff. Uh, he's going on to a graduate program at the University of Kansas. Uh, we know that he'll be a great scholar and a great teacher, and we're looking forward to seeing what is in store in the future for him. So, Jacobo. Matthew Pollock is the outstanding graduate for music and is accompanied by Christopher Blanco. Matt Pollock is a consummate musician. He has spent his time at Western learning his craft, which has manifested itself in a number of ways. Matt has become a fine tuba player. His warm tone and solid intonation have anchored the Overtone series, a very complex musical term, in the Wind Symphony, which is the ensemble that I conduct for the last three years. He performs with artistry, passion, and professionalism. Matt is a creator of music. His composition studies have guided him to create a portfolio of music that is adventurous, complex, engaging, and full of emotion. His music uses a multitude of media and immediately connects the listener to past modes while giving us a glimpse of the future. Finally, down in the depths of this building, lower level two of the music building, he goes by the name Mountain Man. This is largely due to his height, his long-haired look, and ever-changing facial hair. <laughs> as well as the fact that I actually did see him climbing on a mountain or a large rock while I was hiking up in the, uh, in the trails uh, in Bellingham. Uh, as a conductor of the Wind Symphony, I have spent literally over the last four years hundreds of hours with Matt uh, making music. Most of them right here in this very room, I would stand on the podium right there. Matt would sit not far from where he's standing right now, right back here. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much right there. Um, and it's just, uh, it's been a fantastic experience working with Matt. Uh, as a conductor, and especially a conductor of students, when it's time for for them to play, and I make a gesture in a, in a particular moment, you're always never quite sure if the music is actually going to happen. But not with Matt. Uh, he has been the most uh, solid musician uh, that I could ever imagine wanting to work with, uh, and he, he was a, a unanimous choice in the music department for this award. Congratulations, Matt. El 
Alice Rowe is the outstanding graduate for physics and astronomy as an, and is accompanied by Brad Johnson. Well, it makes me uh, seven kinds of ways of happy here to bring <laughs> Ellis Rowe to you. This is the outstanding graduate from physics and astronomy. And I can tell you that I almost didn't recognize him today because in the nearly two years that I've worked with him daily, I've never seen him not wear shorts. <laughs> I was telling his parents earlier that I was looking forward to seeing him today in the business casual shorts, but this is good too. <laughs> As a department chair, it's often sticky to bring up your own student in the meeting that chooses the, the outstanding grad. But this time I was trying to be diplomatic and I was talking diligently about all of the students in the department and uh, that the other members of the department were looking at me and finally one of them said, Brad, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> We know who we're going to choose, so it was one of those kind of meetings. Um, Ellis is really an outstanding student, of course. He's an independent thinker, thinker. He's very quiet, but he's still a leader amongst his peers, and I always found that very interesting. He's not one of the kind that sits in the front of the room. He sits in the back of the room. But as, and as a large class, that's very interesting because sometimes in the back of the room it's a hard to find that guy. But I never had trouble because his peers, whenever I would ask a hard question, would all turn that way. So I, I knew very <laughs> He came of his own accord to my office to ask to do research and uh, he had to come a couple of times. I remember he, uh, he came and asked and I said, yep, I'll get back to you. And uh, of course I got back to him in the way I get back to people. And so he had to come back. And he was persistent, and I'm very glad that he did because he's been an extremely, extremely potent researcher. He's very good, and um, I'm hoping that uh, he, in fact, brings that globe back because I'd like to, a couple of different colors of laser, I'd like to test on that globe. <laughs> And as a theoretical physicist, you have no idea how scary that statement really is. So, he's been working with me on the theory of organic semiconductors, nucleation and growth, and he's been, like I said, he's been really great, and I've been really honored to have him with me. Um, it's one of the interesting things I think I'd like to point out very quickly is that um, he's, I discovered work, working in a lab with him that he would watch online gaming streaming. And I never knew what that was. So I'd sit there and watch with him and these were professional people who played video games for professionally. And I learned that he wasn't really a fan of school and education and he was a big fan of video games. And so it's all the more remarkable that he stands here today because I've got a <laughs> little secret for you that um, Physics is hard. <laughs> okay. So once again, I'd like to uh, please join me in congratulating once again, Ellis Rowe. Mm. Amanda Burnett is the outstanding graduate for political science and is accompanied by Deborah Salazar. doesn't start yet. <laughs> Whoops, I got it. So, like all of our excellent students, Amanda Burnett uh, writes well, thinks incisively, gets A's. Unlike most of them, she's from Texas. <laughs> um, that may not make her a Texan. Identity is kind of a complex topic, but um, my earliest memory of Amanda is when I um, made a request to her and she responded with a, yes ma'am. I did a double take, and she took that to mean disapproval of her southern manners. But indeed, I was really pleased to have a young person show proper deference to authority. <laughs> so, um, Amanda, though, is um, more than intellect and good manners. Um, she also has a sense of civic responsibility, and it's shown by her long-term commitments to organizations like Planned Parenthood in Seattle, where she, for five years, worked as a, or volunteered as a clinic escort and at Noise for the Needy where, that was three years, and Noise for the Needy where over a course of five years she coordinated other volunteers and organized their social networking sites. So that kind of long-term commitment shows me that her civic um, engagement is not about um, resume building or um, course credit accumulation, but about a real sense of commitment to her community. And as a poor citizen myself, I um, have great regard for her. Um, Amanda's also been active in um, politics, like 
good political scientists aren't necessarily, but Amanda is the exception. Um, she's been active in electoral politics, um, volunteering on last year's gubernatorial campaign, and on um, campus activism in a variety of ways. I'll take time. I've known Amanda for almost two years. Uh, she quietly completed my introductory American politics course um, a couple years ago. Um, she said very little, sat about the third or fourth row, and um, I had little idea who he was, but apparently, um, who she was, she, apparently she found all my lectures perfectly clear, and she um, finished the course with the very best grade out of 100 odd students. Um, but I didn't learn to attach a name to her face until um, my queer politics class the next, next spring, um, in which she um, was more vocal, sat front and center, answered all my questions, offered her own, and kept me on my toes. Um, she was so impressive, I asked her to be a teaching assistant the next fall for my American government class, a responsibility she took on with great enthusiasm and skill. And midway through the quarter after the first midterm, when um, she came up to me and asked me, oh, I'm about to do the Supremes, you want to flash that again? <laughs> she um, asked me how I evaluated the TAs, and um, I'm not an assessment nerd, so I hadn't really thought about it. And I didn't give her a very satisfactory response, but she said that um, she thought her students did the best on the midterm of any of the other students because she had done an outstanding job of preparing them. And at that point, it was all I could do not to say, yes, ma'am. <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> I should have. So um, during the last um, two years, as I've observed Amanda in the classroom, read her um, lovely essays, and spoken with her in my office, I've always been aware that I was in the presence of an extraordinary young woman. And um, I know that she's got a lot in front of her, a lot to give, uh, but already her intelligence, her um, ex um, extraordinary competence, her sense of civic responsibility and commitment um, have given a lot to a lot of people and I count myself fortunate to be among them. Anastasia Carlson is the outstanding graduate from psychology and is, an, and is accompanied by Barbara Lehman. Uh, hello. Yeah, you can hear me. Yes. Uh, I introduce you today to Anastasia Carlson. Uh, Anna has a rare blend of traits. She is smart and motivated, but also caring, funny, socially skilled, and just plain likable. Those of you who are attending the 4 o'clock commencement tomorrow afternoon will have the treat of getting to hear her give the student speak, speaker, speaker, be the student speaker. And she'll be more coherent than I am, see. Uh, okay. Anna is known to the faculty in psychology as a motivated student who works well with others and perseveres until she gets it. Now, some students are content with getting it for themselves, but Anna wanted her peers to get it too. Through her experience as a teaching assistant for Dr. Lena Erickson, who is here today to help honor uh, Anna, uh, Anna encouraged Psychology 101 students to study the materials until they also got it. My experiences with Anna made me quite aware of her ability to infuse humor even into seemingly mundane class assignments. She and her friend Amy completed an observational portfolio in which they were required to identify something to measure, to define it, and to measure it well. They chose to measure the use of curse words in lectures delivered by one of my senior colleagues. <laughs> they identified actual swear words delivered in lecture as well as expletive deleted incidents which were defined as using alternative or abbreviated for forms of a known curse word. They both counted and categorized the number of incidents in this faculty member's lectures taking care to establish inter-rater reliability. They concluded by suggesting that he got so emotional about topics such as inattentional blindness that the expletives just spewed from his mouth. <laughs> Theirs was the funniest and perhaps the most careful observational portfolio I have ever read. The faculty member, of course, insists he's just trying to uh, uh, increase memory and student learning. 
All right. So I had another thing that I'm skipping because I see the stop. Uh, so Anna, on behalf of the faculty of psychology who have supported your receipt of this award, I want to congratulate you on your graduation and to thank you for the time you have spent and will continue to spend here at Western with Chainier to a radiator. Um, uh, I want to also thank your family and network of supporters for helping to make you into the tremendous young adult who you are. Mafuza Sobitova is the outstanding graduate for secondary education and is accompanied by Don Burgess. Okay. Uh, Mafusa is a singularly courageous woman and an inspired uh, chemistry teacher. She stands as a steady, bright beacon to her many students and colleagues, and I think there's three of her students up there. <laughs> um, Scott Ellis, the principal at Blaine High School, described her thus. Mufusa cares about her students and cares about their achievement in not only chemistry, but as a global citizens. She has the unique ability to lead her students to metacognition, engagement, knowledge of purpose, and assessment criteria in a kind and a meticulously planned manner. I've learned about her planning zeal. She's honestly the best teacher that I've worked with in the 19 years I've been at Blaine. Wow. There are many dimensions to Mufusa. For example, she speaks uh, three languages. I thought it was four, but she says Tajik is uh, just a derivative of Persian, and Russian and English are easy to learn. <laughs> um, she really hails from a beautifully mountainous uh, country in Central Asian Republic, um, a little smaller than Wisconsin. It's known as Tajikistan. Some call it the roof of the world because it's breathtaking, um, high mountainous landscape. Getting an education in Tajikistan had its many challenges for Mafusa. After independence, they suffered from a devastating civil war. Um, Mafusa did not have access to good schools, so her father tutored her in math and science. And um, she had a grandmother who was a chemist. She was given a car by the Russians for her good teaching. They still drive it, uh, 1979. <laughs> Many people have reported Mafusa uh, supported her longer journey. Her amazing husband, David, who's here today, supported her academic path from community college through Western's renowned chemistry and secondary ed departments. Her father-in-law um, helped her with uh, driving and math. Her mom, even uh, mother-in-law, went swimming lessons. Um, she's not seen her family back home in three years, um, though she continues to thrive from their love. And uh, she tells me she misses her mom's cooking. Um, through courage and goodwill, Mafus has humbly emerged from one of the... As <laughs> I think she's decorated science teacher. She's uniquely positioned, I think, to make a big difference. And I have a final quote for you, Mafusa. In the words of poet Antonio Machado, expressed perfectly the creative charm within which Mafusa is currently constructing her future. There is no path, we make the path by walking. If you get the Herald, I believe there'll be an article in the paper about Mafusa tomorrow. Excellent. All right, thank you. Melinda Schultz is the outstanding graduate for sociology and is accompanied by Glenn Sunokai. Well, there's just two more boxes left. That's fine. I'm really honored to get to present the outstanding senior in sociology, Melinda Schultz. Melinda is actually a third generation Western student. Her grandmother graduated from Western in 1946. Her father, Ray, who's in the audience, graduated in 1986. And he was also recognized as the outstanding senior in economics. So the tree does, or the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Melinda will be graduating tomorrow with a perfect 4.0 GPA. 
Uh, well, her time at Western, the faculty was most impressed with their scholarly and academic abilities. Whereas most of our students only complete a capstone, when they completed a capstone and a senior thesis, I think a lot of your classmates thought you were kind of crazy. But what Melinda did with her senior thesis is she collected over 300 surveys of dealing with issues of panhandling. She was framing her research question under the issue of equity versus liberty. Some of our other research questions have focused on the themes of love and hate. Concerning love, Melinda looked at the interracial dating patterns of biracial daters who were putting ads on Match.com. So she looked over 950 ads and found that biracial daters did subscribe to a um, racial hierarchy. She plans to publish her article in the next few months. Concerning hate in 2012, Melinda was really curious to see what white supremacists, who they chose for, who they wanted to win the presidential elections. So in order to do this, she did a content analysis using the largest hate website, Stormfront, where she looked over 200 posts and found that Ron Paul was her favorite. She uh, presented her provocative findings at the sociological meetings in Nevada. This year, Melinda will be going to graduate school. She was accepted to six PhD programs, including the nation's um, top-ranked sociology in Wisconsin. But after careful deliberations, she's decided to go to Penn State to study inequality. They have offered her five full years of funding, including summers. And so we know you're going to go on to do great things. And we look forward to all of the accomplishments that you will have. Congratulations, Melinda. We're getting close to the end. All right, Teresa Goheen is the outstanding graduate from special education and is accompanied by Jeanette Simone. I'm the director for one of the teacher ed programs off campus. Uh, we have a teacher education site in Bremerton, so I was a long drive today for, for Tessie. And her field supervisor, Kathy, is in the audience somewhere. Hi, Kathy. Uh, we really wanted to step forward and acknowledge an outstanding scholar, an outstanding student, but mostly an outstanding person. Tessie's the kind of person who doesn't toot her own horn, so um, I, I, she's the kind of person who'd come in the office and ask a question and she'd leave and I'd say, wait a minute, you're doing what? Oh, you, you just did what? You are just finished what? Um, because in our site, it's very um, lockstep. We just tell them, this is the class you're taking, this is when it starts and when it's over. And so I kind of thought I knew about my students' lives. Um, and I don't. I keep finding new things. You just did what? So she's, she's graduating um, in just a few days here uh, from Western with her bachelor's degree in elementary ed. Our major is in special ed. And um, she's been finishing out her internship at Jackson Park Elementary School with 23 little first through third graders, multi-aged, incredibly bouncy group. I have to say that the first time I observed Tessie in the classroom, I think I've heard this from many of you say this today, that you, you had a first hit of this person and you knew. And I, I recognize that Tessie wasn't teaching at them. She wasn't doing something to those children. She was working alongside and a little behind and a little bit in front, but in, in such a gentle, um, overseeing manner that you wouldn't know it. It's kind of like all of a sudden she was just there very efficiently and the children were learning. And uh, it's so she's been this person in the background. I've thought of her as a colleague many times when I needed to know what was going on in the cohort. I would uh, surreptitiously dig for a little dirt and have Tessie come in. <laughs> ask her, how's it going? And uh, she has always been a colleague. I'm thinking of her as a colleague much more than a student. And so I'm thrilled that they've already hired her at West um, Hills um, STEM Academy down in Bremerton. And so she's been hired before she's done um, graduating. And I just want to read a couple quotes from her students. Yes, I did ask them um, through her host teacher. And uh, uh, Yana said that she helps us when we're stuck on problems. Emmy said she cares about our safety. Um, Sarah said she's really supportive. She's a teacher, but she's also a friend. And I think my favorite was, I think it's Emlyn. I'm not sure. She, she said she taught us how to do bar graphs. 
And Tessie just finished what we would consider a master's or honors project, which is the teacher performance assessment, which I know was on bar graphs. Um, so these children are really going to take that information, but mostly her, her, just her caring and her heart into the future. So I'm thrilled that there are children in this world that can have her as a teacher. So thank you, Tessie. Yeah. <laughs> Before we get to our last outstanding graduate, I just wanted to mention one more student who couldn't be here today. Uh, Mario Oralo Molinaro is the outstanding graduate for theater, and his uh, faculty mentor would have been Deb Courier, but Mario has a job and is working at the Missoula Children's Theater, so couldn't be here today. Yeah? Thank you. Please. So last, but definitely not least, is Allison Leek from the University Honors Program, and Allison is accompanied by George Maras. There are a lot of things that make a student outstanding. Um, with Allison, the first thing probably is the smile. She will be the first one to tell you that that's not always the way she is, that's the way she feels inside, but it's the way she is inside. She's kind, she's generous, and she's compassionate. She has extraordinary intellectual depth and breadth. Uh, she's a major in English, and I'm pretty confident saying that she's the only student graduating in English this year, maybe most any year, who also has on her transcript multivariable calculus, limits in infinite series, and ordinary differential equations. She's equally talented in mathematics, and she said she couldn't make up her mind about which one to do, so she majored in English and she minored in math. She is equally strong in physics, in economics, in psychology, in a large number of fields. It will come as no surprise with all these talents that on the 9th of July, she will begin a job at Microsoft writing content and code. She's a very talented young woman. My contact with her came initially through advising, and I'm sure that for a long time she regarded her periodic and long visits to my office as an annoyance for me. Oh. <laughs> they weren't even advising, they were conversations. And Allison, I'm going to miss those conversations. This past term, I had a class with Allison. You get a class like this once a decade. You walk in and ask a question. An hour and a half later, the conversation sort of comes to an end. She was responsible, she will credit others, for the quality of those conversations. But I thank you for that class. Ours is a world that faces a number of problems. If you, work someone, if you work with someone like this on a regular basis, you will be optimistic about the future. And I encourage you to remember this name because you will hear it or read it again. Please join me in congratulating Allison Lake. Can we give one more round of applause for all the outstanding graduates and mentors? At the beginning of the ceremony, I said, you are the reason, student, I'm addressing the students now, by the way. You are the reason we do the things that we do. Many of us faculty members had faculty mentors and advisors when we were undergraduates and graduate students. And those mentors generously gave their time to us and their expertise to us. They sat and they listened to us work through ideas or have crazy new ideas. And we are paying it forward to future generations by working with you. 
You reward us, as you have heard so many of our faculty mentors say today. You inspire us, you motivate us, and you keep us on our toes, and we so very much appreciate that. You make us, as we have heard, I, have, I think I've heard it probably 15 times already this afternoon, you make us better teachers, advisors, and people. And for that, we thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> This ceremony and this day makes me think of my favorite quote, and it's a quote by Maya Angelou. And it captures why faculty care so much about you, but it also captures the responsibility we have bestowed upon you. Maya Angelou said, when we cast our bread upon the waters, we can presume that someone downstream whose face we will never know will benefit from our action. As we who are downstream from another will profit from that grantor's gift. So as you leave Western Washington University, remember to cast your bread out on the waters. It is your responsibility to pay that gift forward. And also remember that you are one of us. And even though many months or years may pass between the time you leave this campus and the time that you come back, Know that you are one of us and that we miss you and that we want to hear about your success. So please keep in touch. And on behalf of all of the faculty of Western Washington University, congratulations. To the family members and the faculty mentors and to all of the, gradu all of the graduates, I hope that you have a wonderful day tomorrow. And um, this concludes our ceremony. Thank you very much for your time and your attention.